This week on Indie Miners, the new album from the Kooks. It's been a long wait, we're going to see if it's worth it. And I can guarantee you, it's better than the shit that was Johnny Depp last week. Today on Indie Miners. Hello and welcome to this week's Indie Miners. I'm your host Al, and as always in Melbourne, we've got BJ. G'day mate, how are you? G'day mate, how's it going? Yeah, good, mate. Looking forward to this review. The Kooks' new album, first one in four years, 10 tracks to echo in the dark. Give us a bit of a rundown, mate. Yeah, brilliant. So this is their sixth album, Al. They've been around for 20 years now, The Kooks. So um, very much um, fundamentally, in terms of their roots, they're, they're very much a brick pop type of a band, but have a sort of very much dancey elements to them. And that's just supported by the Spotify meta data that we are seeing that they're very mm-hmm. high in danceability. Um, a lot of their other um, statistics around their, their acousticness, um, as well as the energy are much more in this, I guess, the indie sort of side of things. But interestingly enough, Al, that there were lots of hits on Harry Styles in a couple of the elements. So I'm not sure what uh, you, you want to say about that. In fact, our viewers, if you want to make a comment, please uh, mate, feel free to do that in the comments. So um, interesting, though, um, just in reflecting and listening to the album, it did come across as being very similar to another album we did just recently by Foles, Life Is Yours. And I did a little bit of digging and to compare the two albums. And what it did come up with is it was very sort of similar statistics, especially in around the the danceability um, types of metrics. Um, So there are a number of things where it effectively aligns very well. But I guess if you wanted to compare the two and contrast them, I guess my my view is, is that the foals appear to be, I guess, much more muscular than, than maybe the um, the kooks, um, maybe less indie, much much tighter um, in terms of what they um, they have to offer. But fundamentally, there's lots of very um, much similarities in terms of what they, they both deliver. And I'd be pumped if they both toured together. It'd be very interesting um, if they were both on the road, um, seeing them at the same time. Finally, with the similar albums, the, the only thing to note is that the Kooks 2014 album, Listen, uh, is coming up on the radar as being a similar album. So if you do like this particular album, you should check out that one. So that's that's enough from me from a, a metadata and stats perspective. Mm-hmm. Al, wondering what your initial thoughts were. Yeah, thanks, mate. Always appreciate you crunching the, uh, the numbers there. Look, I've been a fan of the Kooks for a while. I must admit I didn't listen to their previous album in 2018, but I was a big fan of the album Junk of the Heart. I guess that's you know kind of going back 10, 11 years when I was uh, uh, a bit younger, and that was kind of the, the stuff that I was really into. But I've always been a fan of Luke Pritchard's voice. I think he can um, really, uh, really hold a tune and he can really um, produce that sound going from that kind of, uh, big, bigger stadium kind of sound to a smaller acoustic set at uh, at a festival, which is always um, nice to see. I'm really interested in your conversations around the comparisons with uh, the Foles and how they've kind of both released a, a new album at the same time, because I, I would definitely agree that there's definitely some similarities there and it would be fantastic to see them live. Uh, I think the album's pretty solid, mates. I think um, there's a really nice uh, fluid kind of sound moving from that COVID kind of era to a new kind of post-COVID era and basically a band that just wanted to write a happy album uh, after the last uh, few years, mates. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I certainly enjoyed it as well. Um, I think that there were some similarities with the Foles. We won't, we've already spoken about that, but um, I think what I, I did like about a lot of the songs that there, there was um, a lot of up beatness with with a lot of the, the the tracks that were coming through but there were unpredictable moments as well which i i also like i, I like not having to um I, I guess have something very predictable in front of you that you know how it's all sort of going to run so i very much enjoyed that about the album um the the singer the lead singer he does I'll come across a little bit like, a, I guess, a, a solo boy band. Um, I don't know if that's um, like not not being really familiar. With You're not going to compare him with Harry Styles anyway. Well, I don't know. I've already it's a, look at the data has already sort of come up with that. But um, look, that's maybe not a, a bad thing. Um, but but that did uh, come across that you know he's obviously a very um, up and about singer, very talented in that that regard. But um, overall, as I said, I, I really enjoyed listening to this one. Yeah, 
No, thanks, mate. So we'll move into the the top tracks, and that was it was a bit of a tough decision actually. We've got the kind of singles that have been released in the top tracks, um, which are really standout songs. But it is a solid album. I've got to put that out there. In terms of putting a number on a track of three, two, one, I actually went with the song "Modern Days" uh, as number three for me. I just thought that was a really cool, interesting sound, especially towards the um, the mid and the end. Uh, number two, one of the singles, Connection. I just think that's just an absolute cracking way to start an album. Uh, typical kind of kooks fashion. You always know the first song is going to be an absolute belter. But the number one song is the, the new single, uh, Cold Heart, which is just an absolute fantastic song. A ripper film clip to go along with it. Um, three, two, one. Bit of an easy task this week, mate. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I certainly agree. Cold Heart, I really enjoyed as a track. Um, it, like I was talking about unpredictable moments, um, it, it does go along. And then there's this nice coda at the end with, uh, I think it's a children's choir. I'm, I'm not too sure. But mm. um, it, it was really a, 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 yeah, a pleasant, really good, fun track to, to listen to. Um, and, and again, one that you didn't kind of expect to, to, to sort of end in that particular way. Yeah, no, for sure. So I guess we get to the uh, the pointy end of the uh, the episode, mate, giving it a, a verdict out of five. I guess anything would be better than last week's review of Johnny Depp, where I did give it a one star to much criticism. I would like to say to Kooks fans, it's definitely better than a one. I'm giving it a solid 3.5 this week. I think it's a really easy listening. Ten tracks, uh, definitely some songs that you could hear echoing in the dark, mate. Three and a half for me. What are your thoughts? I'm giving it three and a half too. Yes, um, I agree. Much, much better than Mr. J. Depp. Um, it was a fun listen to it and, and one that I, th- I think just to sort of echo maybe what I said about Foles a, a few weeks ago, it, it's the kind of album that you'd be putting on before going out on a Saturday night. So that sort of up yep. and about type of album. So really enjoyed it. Um, pleasant to listen to, as I said, three and a half stars. Excellent. So that was our review of the new album from the Kooks, 10 Tracks to Echo in the Dark. That wraps up another episode of Indie Miners. Please look to subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and let us know if there's an album you would like us to look at. So until next time, bye for now, and thank you for watching.